Hello, welcome to this week's edition of Edge of the Box. On the sofa today, we have... My name is Ian Carr, manager of Bado FC. Hi, okay. player of FC Romania. And our special guest today... Mike, new manager of South Man. And my name's Jason, and to start off with, we're going to analyse the game between Red Bridge and South London. Redbridge have had a decent start to the Essex Senior League season, winning three of their opening five matches, including last week's commanding 5-1 victory at Tower Hamlets. They faced a stern test in a Saffron Walden Town side that is undefeated to start the campaign, having started the league season with four successive wins. Barely five minutes had been played when Jack Leachman won the ball in midfield, playing an inch-perfect ball over the top where Gavin Cockman cleverly lobbed Florent Gislet in the Redbridge goal. The away side would suddenly find themselves on the back foot though, as Charleston Brown skipped past a would-be tackler in midfield and came forward, eventually playing in Sam Dickens. Dickens' cross was cleared only as far as Tom Bites, who finished well to draw the host level, with very little of the goal to aim at. retake the lead from another set piece. Jack Leachman rising highest to head the long throw into the bottom corner. The two goal cushion breakthrough would come eventually for Saffron Walden, as Spike Bell's cross was headed straight to Cockman, the striker having plenty of time to compose himself before firing home at the near post. With less than 10 minutes remaining, out of nowhere, Redbridge reduced the deficit back to one. Tom Bites meeting the cross with a good header at the back post. Tom Bites looked like he may have completed the game-saving hat-trick as he headed the ball beyond air, only for Liam Burgess to chase the ball down and head it to safety. It would prove to be a match-winning header, one that preserves Saffron Walden's unbeaten start and keeps them top of the league, two points clear of Hashtag United and Takeley, who have both played a game less than the league leaders. So yeah, we've got an eventful game here. We've got Redbridge against Saffron Walden. Both teams are doing alright so far this season. I think you've got them next week, right? Yes, got Redbridge on Saturday. I think um, in, the, in the highlights that I've watched, it's like Redbridge have got some good quality players in the attacking positions. For me, the defence drops very, very deep. So it makes the pitch really, really big. Mm. And I think Saffron Walden are very quick to get the ball forward, join quickly. And good goal that one there. Yeah. Ball, yeah. Ball, nice ball, yeah. put him behind, good finish. Well, you were just saying they dropped deep, but they still managed to find the way in Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, do you think the keeper so could have come out a bit quicker? No, I, I think what's happened is there, they're, they're, uh, Redbridge are playing forward and there's been a quick turnover of possession. Okay, let's so, see that again. So, yeah, so, 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 so we'll run that and see how they go actually. So yeah. to me it looked like on the turnover of possession everyone was moving forward, not yeah. thinking defensively. Yeah. And then it's been a quick turnover. So this okay, so. just came to look here. They're not expecting the ball to come back. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? He just turned there quickly, didn't he? Good one though, good pick out. Yeah. From Sammy. Full back yeah. was in looking to go forward, I think, rather than to tuck in because yeah. I don't think they was expecting him to spin like that and then yeah. put a ball through. And not forgetting the defender that originally headed the ball out yeah. was out of shape as a result. Yeah. And then obviously the defence was a bit out of shape. I think, uh, sorry, I don't mean to touch on too much about that goal. Can you run, run it a little bit? I'm sorry, the players there were near enough to him 
to stop him from turning. So he had too much time. Yeah, they allowed him to turn and then to put it, pick up that pass. Mm. Yeah, there was about three players around. Yeah, it's, 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 I think it's lazy from the midfield there, to be honest. Defence are probably stepping up thinking that yeah, there's pressure, on the, pressure yeah. on the ball, he's got to go backwards because he's facing that way. Yeah. They've stepped off him, he's spun and then... But still, credit to the pass though. Oh, yeah, yeah, credit course, to the yeah, run yeah. and yeah. to the finish as well. Yeah. So, that set the tone for the game. Again, Red was dropping. Seems like Redbridge are more playing on the counter, so yeah. this is another example of a counter, I guess. He tapped her in midfield and came forward, eventually playing in Sam Dickens. Dickens' cross was cleared only as far as Tom White, who finished well to draw the host level, with very little of the goal to aim at. It's a goal, goal with a strike, so right. finish. I said this is the second chance I've taken one out of it. See, sometimes as well, it comes down to a little bit of experience. Scott Pevers, who's playing at the back for Saffron Walden, has probably played like 200 games for Bowers and Pitsy. Wow, wow. That's a massive that's difference. That's a lot of, cool. ex lot of experience. Another example, get the ball in the box. Straight in, that came from a long throw, right? Yes. yes. And just... Go the other. That's their strength. That's their main strength, I would say. They deserve to be 2-1 up, I mean, they've had so many chances, yeah. they should be 4-5-6 up. Teams in the East London area play a different style of football from teams from sort of Suffolk or I agree. as you go out more. I agree. Teams in the East London area play a lot of push and run kind of football, mm. uh, five yards passes. Yeah. Teams who are further out, they play areas. It's like they've got a plan, haven't they? They know where they're going, where yeah. they're yeah, yeah, yeah. to go forward, get it wide, deliver. Phases of play. They look like a very lively team. Mm. Yeah. Very strong team. Game should be out of sight right now. <laughs> <laughs> just, I can't believe it's two one. one. <laughs> the whole of second half, we just watched them attack and attack and attack. <laughs> See, like what I saying there about how slowly they're moving out, Redbridge, yeah. just allowing Saffron Morgan to keep building up, mm. building up the pressure. I'm not sure. Don't know messing about. about. Maybe that could be the tactic, but that's it's another goal. goal. It's three one. It's playing on the right one. Do you know? Good finish, though. Do you know when you're in a game though and you're penned in defensively? No. It's so easy for people on the outside or for forwards to say, "Oh, why isn't my defence pushing up?" Mm. But when you're a defender playing in that role, yeah. you've just defended to stop a team scoring, yeah. given all your energy, and then you're then being asked to get up to the halfway line or to get thirty yards up the pitch. It's hard. It's hard. Physically hard. With less than 10 minutes remaining, out of nowhere, Redbridge reduced the deficit back to one. Tom Bites is a good head. That's a good call, very good call. Good lead. Thank you, Christopher. It's almost as if they've learned during the game what Saffron were doing, like they've yeah. just done it themselves against them. And that's it, it came in at 3 2, South from Order. Would you say they deserve victory then? Very well deserved, to be fair. You know I mean? Yeah, it's probably it should have been about 6 7 2, man. Yeah. yeah. Good game, though, and um, good resilience from Redbridge to, to keep coming back, but I think at the end of the day, South from mm -hmm. deserved to win. So. But I think what they need to take away from this game, South from Order, is they need to finish their chances because yeah. this game that we watched now, if they score one more, if Redwood would have scored one more goal, they could have gone and win the game. Of course. And that's how football works, because you're yeah. on the momentum. Yeah. So they need to finish their chance. Once it's 5-1, 6-1, it's hard for you to get back into the game. Exactly. Yeah. Mike, would you say that Redbridge style of play was yeah, correct think, for the, the opponents that were playing today? I think I think for Redbridge, um, they've got a holding midfield player called Liam Burgess, who's very good getting on the ball. Um, but he's not the quickest in, with the transition. Mm. Uh, getting from defensive to forward and neither, yeah. neither looking at that are Redbridge as a team yeah. but they've got quality forwards who yeah. can score goals so Saffron Warden are a team who will put the ball into areas and will join quickly yeah. with intensity and I, I would guess that they, they've won that because they, they're a fitter side okay. yeah. they're a fitter side get the ball into the areas um, and like you said if they did finish their chance, it was a bit more clinical. It probably would have been mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a couple, you know, a couple more goals, a couple more goals in it. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that that's the main difference. If you keep defending in and around your box, yeah. you're gonna, against a good team, you're going to concede goals eventually. Definitely, definitely. Yeah.
Alright, so the topic for this week's debate is why do we have players who rather play at a higher level and not get many minutes or not get many starts than just play at a lower level and play more frequently, get more minutes and get more game time? Why do we have players who have this mindset? You want to start with, start with you, Nico? <laughs> to be fair, I mean, from my experience watching the game and playing the game as well, it's, it's when you speak to your friends and family and stuff mm -hmm. and you tell them you're at this level, they look here a bit different. Okay. And you also believe, like, at that kind of level, if you're on the bench and you get a start yeah. and you do prove yourself, you believe you're going to get more starts in the game. Okay. I mean, so you're thinking, what, more on a status thing? That's that There's thing element of status, yes, to be yeah. fair. I know a lot of players that, that play, like you say, they play yeah. at a higher level, but they don't really get that many stats. Yeah. But they know they're playing a good team. Even though so they can say, oh, okay, this is so, so I play for this team. Yes. All right, then. So let, it looks good. Uh, that's understandable. But then let's link it to from round one, yeah. or Bet Victor one, yeah. division one, and this is senior. The re in my opinion, the reason why players tend to want to stay up and maybe have a few starts now mm -hmm. and again, then, then play yeah, uh, frequently in, in the SSN or league below them, is because the, the professionalism is higher in terms of training in terms of the players around them, their, um, how can I say, their ambition as well. Because mm -hmm. as you get higher, yeah. you can see the ambitions also similar. The course, same, course, I want to play maybe full time, yeah. I want to earn this amount, of uh, this amount of money yeah. because of my yeah. family and yeah. Yeah. whatnot and everything like that. So managers these days need to understand that, mm. that players want to aspire to just play at a certain level because it's going to make them happy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the players that they're around. So what would you say if, um, mm -hmm. If it wasn't the Essex Senior and it was the Spartan South Midlands, what would you say then? Because I played in the Spartan League yeah. with Hodgson quite a few years ago. Um, that side of the league was more, it seemed more professional. Yeah. There was more of a budget, you know, they were looking after the players more. There was, you know, you, you saw a lot of, in terms of kits, you know, do you know what I mean? In terms of the, the track suits and everything like that, there's more of that in that league than yeah. Essex yeah. Senior. Yeah. I'm thinking, when I look at Essex Senior in those times, I was like, yeah, like the training suit, the showers. It, it didn't feel like. So, so my view on it is, is that now the, the Essex senior is starting to try, or they're broadening it, aren't they, to get some Hertfordshire clubs. Oh yeah. Mm. In the Hertfordshire area, you've got better, fun, better funded clubs. Mm. Now, for me, the issue is, is that when you've got a young player who is on an upward curve of trying to move up. You cannot knock that player for trying to progress into the next league up. Mm -hmm. Whether he, whether he's capable of doing it or not, different opinions. Yeah? There was a boy who came over to Barking, so I didn't decide. He's now playing every game for Barking. Mm. A year later. So we've all got different opinions on a player, yes, yes. and sometimes managers you get it right on one player, you get it wrong on mm -hmm. another. Mm -hmm. What I don't understand is is that. You'll get a player who's on a bench for a, you know, a boss, you know, better Victor club. If he's not coming on much, or he's only playing a few minutes here or there, firstly, the reason why he's not coming on is because his game awareness is not the same as the person who's starting. Mm. For me, the game awareness is the, is the number one key mm. why a player's not starting. Secondly, because he's not playing enough games, he's not fit enough. He's not going to be sharp. So when he does come on the pitch, the best he can really hope for, unless he is a short, sharp, nippy player who's very quick as a sub to come on, the best he can hope for is a very average performance, mm. in my opinion, because it's he's just not going to be at the pace of the game, the sharpness mm -hmm. of the game. And so, effectively, when you are in that row of this game, you don't come on, that game, you do come on, you're actually setting yourself up for a fall. The chances of you succeeding... Yeah, it's quite low. The chances of you succeeding are very low. Now, for a manager at that level, he needs to try and keep a squad together. Yeah. So even if he knows that you are really not in his first 14 players, let's say, because even the bench, you might name five, but there's three you fancy more, yeah, than, yeah. more than the five. Mm -hmm. So... 
or, or certain players who you may turn to, you've got more trust in that player, etc., etc. In that situation, you're not going to get minutes. You're not going to the, the the manager at that next level. He needs to keep his squad together. So he's going to keep saying to you, listen, keep working hard, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. keep trying, keep fighting for your place. He's never ever going to tell you that you're not good enough. Because when a manager yeah. tells you that you're not good yeah. enough, he burns the bridges with yeah. the players. Yeah. I know because I've done that before, I've made that mistake. I've said to a player, I'm sorry, right now you're not good enough. Or right now you're not good enough to step up. And then what happens is you get Mike's the bad guy when all you've tried to do is be, mm -hmm. be honest. Mm -hmm. But then that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. So what I've now started to do and it was to be honest I got it off just off of Darren Manning at Holbridge where I've where I've just been. You don't ever tell a player he's not good enough. Mm -hmm. You just say this guy's in front of you right now. Yeah. You've got to fight for your place, whatever. Then that that player who's not playing, he will make his own decision mm -hmm. whether to stay around and fight for the place or whether to whether to move on. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, the players who stay who are not getting no minutes. It's all ego. I'm 46, so I'm an older generation. There is no ego. Mm. I'm, I'm, uh, ego is kind of, mm. I haven't got to look a certain way. Yeah. What somebody thinks of me, that it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Mm. Um, and I think if more of those players did step down to the Essex Senior League and play, the quality of the Essex Senior League would we'll come up. Yeah. That's what I believe. Would we'll, we'll improve, and then it's already improved this season. I think yeah. in terms of the in terms of the teams yeah. and and the quality of players from what I've seen. But um, when you consider Southend Manor, we beat Ilford yesterday two one in a game that was lower to mid table. Now you would look at the results, and it was a good quality game for ninety minutes. It wasn't one sided. It was end to end chances. And you think if more of those players who are just hanging around was to drop down to get games, mm -hmm. then the league would be better. And I, and I use for an example, these, these players, they might not appreciate me for saying it, but mm. at the moment I've got Ninja on loan from Barking. Um, Andre Spencer, who's come from Welling Garden City and before has been a few, a few clubs. So they've tried to go up. At certain clubs they've been good enough to go up. Mm. And now they're at a stage where they're not quite getting enough games, so they're thinking, okay, let's go and play for Mike. Mm. I know him from before. Mm. They've come over the last two games, really, really enjoyed their football. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. That's, that's really, important. really, really, really enjoyed that's their football. I feel they've made the right decision. Um, that's what it's about. And yeah. there's a lot of players like that who are trying to hold at the level they are, but. I mean, some of these clubs like Romania, for example, they only pay for a win. You're not staying there for money. For sure, are you? Mm. You're not staying there for money because you're only getting paid on a win. Um, a lot of the money at certainly some of the lower level clubs in these leagues, the money is, you know, what if you're if you're only coming on every now and again, you're not going to get much money anyway, are you? Yeah, yeah. So you're, it's certainly not financial. See, the thing is, I think it could depend at the stage of your career you're at as well. Yes, yeah. That also plays a part. So let's say you're in your late twenties starting to approach 30, you've had your career already, you don't, you don't think you're going to make it pro or anything mm -hmm. like that. So, whatever level you decide to play at, probably, it just it's not even the level, it's more yeah, it's the finances important. now, yeah. or maybe just to play football, or yeah. just to be close and to home, aspects, work, yeah. it around, uh, work it around your, yeah. your family life, and maybe location-wise. Yeah. I think um, the level doesn't matter so much to you when you get older, mm -hmm. but the younger you are, I think, this debate is more for let's say the yeah, players yeah, trying yeah. to step in or to it, football or, level. Or depends on the on the player's um, goals, targets. So goals if he target if he wants to be challenged till he stops playing football, then he, obviously I'm not saying it's a senior is not a challenge. Mm -hmm. I can't say that because all these can be a challenge. But it depends on his the level of challenge. Maybe he said I want to stay as high as possible so I can be challenged. Mm -hmm. That's the question. That's the difference. The thing but are you getting challenged staying on a bench? No, but the thing is, no, I, but I can relate to this a bit. I can, I can relate because the last time I played football properly, I would say, was like six years ago. So okay. I was 19, 20. Um, I was at a Bet Victor Prem team, mm -hmm. like top end of the table. Good players, decent players. And you know, at that age, a 19, 20 year old, to be training with these players, to be in, like, I wasn't getting much game time. Yeah. I was like you said, um, mm -hmm. a manager would see me as a, as a squad player, because 
I was a decent backup player just in case. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I myself, per, as an individual, was not getting the most in terms of match game mm -hmm. time for reasons like you said, your fitness levels at the end of the day gets affected. So eventually, at the end of the season, funny enough, I went on loan to South End Manor. Mm -hmm. So I held out, I could have gone on loan any time of that mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. But at that age, I think this is where you're right as well. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of an ego thing in it because not just ego, but I worked hard to get to that stage, so to that level. Keep the so I wanted to, like, I'm like, yeah, if I go backwards, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, in terms of yeah, level, I'm, I'm going backwards in terms of career. Yeah, that was my mindset. At the time. And many, many players think like that. And there's nothing wrong, like that, yeah. but it's you know detrimental. I agree with him so much. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. starts from a young age. It's, yeah, when yeah. you're young, you're mentally yeah. young, yeah. you think you just want to stay there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But generally, yeah. you might get seen up. Uh, but a lower team, yeah, you play regular football. Sometimes you need to go back with one step back to take two mm. steps forward. Yeah, exactly. that, that, that wasn't my mentality at the, but, the time. One step back was like, I'm going yeah. one step further back again after yeah. that maybe, and then maybe that. So it's just... Yeah, for example, like, like, let me tell you my experience on it. Like, okay, now, okay, I'm in Romania and the uh, Bet Victor. Yeah. Last season, I was struggling to get minutes. Okay. I, I, and I, I put it down to when I was coming, I wasn't fit enough. Mm. So I was thinking, okay, I'm not fit, I need to pick up my fitness. Mm. Then I was trying, then the last two games of the season, I think I really got in and then I got the goal and then this. Yeah. Then it really went on from there. This is okay, I'm injured, okay, I started two mm. games, came on, came off from the bench, yeah. and I'm yet to see what's going to happen next. Mm. But previously, I've had bad experience in the lower leagues. Mm. So where, it, like I said, the professionalism, mm. the team tracks you even, everything like that, it's like, wow. We travel all this way, yeah. mm. and then you see guys probably eating chicken and chips. And it's like <laughs> when you're young, when you're young, you're you're trying to aspire. When you're young, yeah. you're trying to aspire yeah. to be up, up, there. up there. And then when you're in an environment yeah. where it's not what you're trying, what you're mm. what you're getting, it's like mm. it's so hard to stay there. So I think players should now see, okay, you know, as seen is now changing. I can yeah. see it's changing. Yeah, Spartan league's changing. So I think young players should now not be afraid to step down yeah. and say, you know what. The profession is getting up there, it's growing, it's growing. So let me take that step down. But before know, it wasn't like that. Before it is true. Professionalism in any team yeah, is set by the group of players. Mm. Yeah. It's not by the club. It's not by the club. I think it's more. Because let me tell you something, I managed Clapton yeah, mm. for three seasons. 400 fans, 500 fans, 600, 700 fans. Easy. Mm. Yeah. The first year I managed Clapton, we got to two cup finals. The craziest dressing room you've ever seen. Uh. I had players take a player took his kit off at half time just because I told him he was five yards out of, out of position on a through ball. I had a player in the cup final told me take me off at half time, I'm not playing no more. Yeah, I'm talking nice. guys who thought they were big names. Um we I was laughing with Ninja yesterday. I picked him at right side uh right side forward against uh, Barker in the cup final. He played every position in that cup final but right side. <laughs> 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 Right. So, uh, uh, um, I had uh, players directly going to the chairman to try and get me to lose my job. Um, see, see all kinds, all kinds of madness. People from the outside. Um, do you know the funny one back in the day? I don't know whether it still happens now. It hasn't happened to me yet, South and Manor. People copy and pasting your messages. So, like a manager mm -hmm. hasn't. Most every manager I've come across. We, most managers haven't got the time to pick up the phone to every single player on the conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you send a WhatsApp message. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, voice notes started coming out, didn't they? <laughs> and that kind of thing. And you've got players going, the worst worst mistake I ever made, someone asked me my opinion on, a, on another player. Mm -hmm. A player asked me the opinion. And I, I gave the player my opinion, and he was closely connected to this player. Oh the next thing I know, that player's coming back to me oh. and going, oh, you've said, you know, this. And um, i give you an example now. I've just started at South Um We've got a lot of players from 17 to 21 and a 16-year-old keeper. And then I've brought in um, a few experienced boys to play with them. The dressing room is fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. And what I did, I, I went in there, uh, cleaned everything out, the changing rooms, everything, just to make it look as best mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. it can look. But at the same time, clubs at this level, they've got no money. Mm. 
Mm. You don't see no supporters in, but, the, but the, like, in, in, in the grounds, but, do you? But, so it's cut you, but that's what I'm saying. The fact that you clean out the dressing room, you want it, you made an effort for the players. Even if they don't have money, this is what players want to see when they go down. Yeah. They don't, players are not worried about money too much. I know yeah, there's yeah. some that do because of other reasons, but players want to see professionalism to the, to the team, yeah. to the point where the showers are okay. After, after the match, we're eating at least a sandwich, not chicken yeah. and chips. A clap from the showers mm. never works. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So why, why, would, why would someone, okay, why would someone want to come down not okay. He will start every game. Then, then what? Do you know what I'm going to say? It seems like there's a delay. So, do you know what I'm going to say? I I've played as well. Mm. When I played, I was not just saying I, I. I always played for teams where I started. Okay. Always played for teams where I started, and I think the guys who do settle for staying on the bench for somebody. When it comes to the end of their career, wherever that is, when they haven't played, they will look back and they They'll regret it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 of course, of no, course. They will. Uh, I hear what you're saying about professionalism and all this, but that shouldn't be the key thing in your mind. No, no, but I'm saying that's what our players but, are but saying. I'm not agreeing with it because I always, I always think that players should now think you can go down. You can go down. There's not. Don't think leagues. Whoever, whichever player thinks, oh, if I go in league, oh, I'm, I'm going to a poor league. That player doesn't know about football because no player should think, oh, this league is dead, this league is rubbish. This No, yeah. you should think, you know what, let me go and play football because by the time you reach 29, 30, you're thinking, well, this is not going to be forever. So play as much as you can. That's what I was saying. See, there's also one big difference between the leagues. One massive difference. If I get a player at Essex senior league level, like at South End Manor, and let's say... Let's say I spot their weaknesses, then I will work with those players in training on their weaknesses, and then I'll give them time to improve mm. their weaknesses. Mm. Obviously, if you're down the bottom of the league, that's got you need to change that quick. If you're not down the bottom of the league, you can give them time. That time yeah. When you're going up that level to the depth to someone's paying you money, mm. and there's also a lot more players willing to take your place, mm. Mm. you have to be ready to go. Time, yeah. Yeah ready to go, ready to deliver. And if you can't deliver, you're out. then you're out, or you're gonna be that guy who gets included for games just when we're short. Maybe you get a few minutes. And I'm just saying, for me, there's a, if you look across the teams, yeah. I could go all through football web pages, looking at, the, looking at um, in certain, the two leagues that I know, are the, are the Central and the North. And you'll see the same substitution, same same substitutes, week more or less, week, week in, week out, and the same guys not coming on, or when they do come on, they come on after 75, 80 minutes. Mm. And my attitude is, yes, I, I agree with what you're saying. If you if you step down, you don't want the the, the atmosphere I had at Barkinside and the team I um, had at Barkinside, the quality of players I had at Barkinside, I wouldn't want a player to come there. I can understand why nobody came. That was partly my fault, partly other people connected around us, partly the mm. playing squad we had. Mm. But right now, if someone said to me, do you think it's worth coming down to step in and coming to play for South End Manor? And I'd go, well, yeah, fantastic atmosphere, good side. I'm not just saying because I've just yeah, joined, yeah. I'm not trying to attract players, but there's, you know, Takely, mm. for example, fantastic surface, fantastic facilities, mm. and there's plenty of other clubs in the senior league, uh, in the senior league where, better quality players could step down and play. Yeah, yeah. So it depends on the club as well at that level. Yeah. And I'll give you an example so as well. There's a the player level. there's a yeah. player at Barnet called Jack Barham. Yeah, yeah. Who's who stepped down a couple of seasons ago to play for Farrock. And then since then he's just gone up and up and up. Yeah. Um, Sam Ashford plays for Emil, Emil Hempstead. Started off at Stansted. Mm. It's gone up. Look at somebody like uh, East London boy, Joe Hill. Oh, yeah, who's, okay. who's gone through the levels? Is I think he's at Maidenhead now. Yeah, yeah. There's lads who have really progressed. Who, who Addy Cole, yeah, Braintree, and couldn't get in the Grays team last season under Jamie Stewart. Mm. Has now has now gone up. So you've got to play. Mm. And, it, yeah. and and the other thing is, one manager might not not, not like you, the other manager Good. will Love like it. you. And I'll give you an example of a guy you guys will probably know really well, Alex Teniola. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I watched Alex Tenniona play for Averley and I thought, what's all the fuss about? Yeah, what? What's all the fuss about? I watched him the other week play oh, for nice. Averley. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what a player in terms of yeah. the link up mm -hmm. with them particular players he's playing with. 
He looks fantastic. Yeah, so yeah, that's what I was wondering. So, so be, club to club, it could yeah, it's it true. Because when was that? Avery, when was that? Avery, I, I was thinking, why is he not? What's going on here? Why is he not? Because mm-hmm. for me, he was, he was. I think he's a very good striker. Mm-hmm. When he's going to Avery, he's showing up. So it's it's best mm-hmm. to play with a manager that's gonna. Take you got the last point. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you guys as well. I mean, professionals that like you keep talking about, it's very important, like you say. And but like you said as well, Mike, you have got to play, man. So mm-hmm. if you're not getting game time, you've got to drop down, get some minutes, get match fit. Or go somewhere else, because not necessarily to drop down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, not if you're not, if not, you're not, unless you're gonna go to the bottom after the table, because there'll be a reason why you're not starting in your in your in your team. Remember, yeah. it's a game of opinions. You could, of course, I understand what you're cross. saying. But if you have to drop down, yeah, you can do it. Drop down and get now, you, now you can do it because yeah. the leagues are different now. Because yeah. it's, it's gonna be better it's, now. It's better yeah. now. The infrastructure, facilities, and everything like it's better now. Now you can do it. And players don't need to be afraid anymore. You can go down. And, and, and even I'll say this: Friday mm-hmm. night, I watched um, Frankfurt play against. Harridge and Parkstone at Bowles and Pitsy. What a good quality game. Mm. And that's step six. Yeah. Uh, and I'm everyone knows that and they should go and see I'm talking a real good quality game. Well, yeah. do you know what you just said there? Mm. This is the biggest thing that makes me laugh with players. The player will go to come up to you in training and you'll go, yeah, uh, I think I can get to, I think I can play Bostic Prem. Uh, all right, okay. <laughs> or, or Conference South, yeah, you'll get another. I think I can play yeah. Bostic Prem or Conference Okay, okay. <laughs> when was the last time you went and watched a... a have you ever seen them play? Yeah. No, no, I haven't been, but that's the level just, I think I can just get to. Just know yeah. what the level right? is that. Because yeah. the, the level in physicality yeah. and speed between Essex Senior and Bostic and, and National South yeah. Oh, it's incredible. We'll wrap up there. It's like, mm-hmm. a good debate, and I think we're unanimous that we uh, we, mm-hmm. we all agree, really. We will let you comment. Fans, and fans you can think. comment on Twitter and just let us know what you think. But yeah, if you don't agree with us, you're wrong. Just leave it there. Yeah. All right, <laughs> 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 right, guys. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Thanks to our special guest, Mike. Thank you. As well, Volta. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys next week. Subscribe and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>